Food. We can't survive without it. But the way we're producing it right now is pretty hard to live with too. You may not think of biodiversity loss, climate change and our food systems interlinked, but the way we produce food today is the number one cause of biodiversity loss globally and is responsible for nearly one third of all global greenhouse gas emissions. This means what we eat and how we produce it is having a major impact on our planet. But how come that's happening? Here's what's actually going on. Food production is driving biodiversity loss through overfishing and converting natural spaces to agricultural land. We're deforesting huge areas on a large scale to make space to produce food, which results in biodiversity loss. When we lose biodiversity, we lose species and spaces which are essential allies in our efforts to combat the climate crisis because intact natural spaces store carbon, provide oxygen and regulate temperatures. We see the impact of the climate crisis through erratic and unseasonal weather patterns, degraded soils and drought. This causes crops to fail, which makes food production even harder. And so the negative cycle continues. The good news is that people are waking up to the issue and taking matters into their own hands. From the booming plant-based food industry and more organic, local and sustainable options in shops and restaurants, to the increasing popularity of flexitarian, vegetarian and vegan diets, it's obvious that the way we think about and consume food is starting to change for the better. But to create long-lasting change, it's crucial for us to recognize that the food, biodiversity and climate crises are all intertwined. To tackle one, we need to see them as different slices of the same pie. Currently, we use more than enough land to feed the world a healthy, sustainable diet. If we adopt practices that are good for nature and biodiversity, we can eliminate the need to convert more natural spaces to agriculture. A global shift away from eating intensely raised livestock to eating more plants would use less land to produce food and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This all helps to mitigate climate change, and a more stable climate then gives us more stability to grow crops. And so the positive cycle continues. There is hope, it's not too late yet. But individuals, governments and businesses all need to act now to bring the changes needed for an environmental revolution. The clock is ticking.